Hi everybody, time for chapter 12 in Farmer Boy. You'll need both your reading book and you will need your workbook. We're going to start with the workbook today. Would you please take your workbook for Farmer Boy and open to page number 32. Page 32. We're going to start with our reading uh, notes at the top. Then we're going to do our vocabulary. Then we will read or listen to and follow along chapter 12. And then we'll come back and we'll finish talking about the questions. So on the top of page 32, let's first talk about the reading notes that are up there today. The first word looks kind of funny. You've probably heard this word before. This word is colander. Colander, can you say that? Yes, colander. A colander is a bowl-shaped kitchen utensil with holes for draining off liquids. When I make spaghetti, I use my colander after I've boiled the spaghetti. I take the pot and then I take my colander, I dump the spaghetti in there and it drains all of the water out and then I put it back in. A colander can be used for anything like that that you want to drain the liquid out of. It's a bowl with holes, all right? The next word there, do you know what that is? Looks like solder, doesn't it? If we added it S-O-L-D-I-E-R, that's soldier. But this is not that at all. It's actually a funny pronunciation. Do you know how to pronounce it? It's actually solder. The L is silent. Solder. It means to join metal objects using heated metal. My son Roger is a welder, right? So he puts things together and he uses um, solder sometimes. Uh, he uses the metal to put things together so that stuff will stick together. Um, kind of hard to explain, but when you use really hot heat to put things together, that means you're soldering it, all right? So you solder. That's weird. All right, let's look at the vocabulary. Number one, the young horses whinnied to the big white horse. Whinnied. Any ideas on what that is? Some of you like to do stuff with horses. What does it mean if they whinnied? Remember? That means the horse neighed. Neighed. Now watch how this is spelled. N-E-I-G-H-E-D. This is one of those words that has the E-I-G-H. We've talked about that before. Here, the E-I-G-H says A. This is how you spell neighed, as in when a horse makes a noise. All right? Number two, peddler. I want to talk about this before we even read from the book. This is a way to spell pedal. This is a way to spell pedal. And this is peddler. Let's talk about this. Right here, pedal. Do you guys have a bike that you like to ride? You can use the pedal to push, you push it, and it makes the bike go. You can say that you are pedaling, right? That's with a D. What about this one with a T? Anybody know? Give you a hint. These things right here. A flower petal. A flower petal, that's the, the pretty colorful part of it, of a flower, okay? That's not what we are talking about here. A peddler. I'm not talking about either one of those. Let's read the sentence for context. Number two says, Nick Brown, the tin peddler, was a jolly fat man. A peddler is someone who tries to sell you something. So a tin peddler in those days would come around to each farm and they would sell things made out of tin. So a peddler is a traveling salesman. That's what we're going to write. A traveling salesman. So they really would go to each farm and they would show what they had to sell. They would make things out of 10 pots, pans, other stuff. And they would try to sell it. A peddler is someone who would sell something, okay? All right, number three. Mother was a good, shrewd trader, trader, like she would trade things. Shrewd. Any ideas? Have you heard it in context before? Someone shrewd? 
In our book, we're going to say she was crafty and clever. Crafty, clever. Clever, we've learned before. Clever means smart, not just book smart, but you know how to deal with people. You know how people think. You are smart when it comes to that and you can figure things out. Crafty, meaning you can figure out interesting ways to do things, to be smart about it, okay? So mother was a shrewd, uh, a shrewd trader. She knew how to do that uh, effectively to get the best deals. Number four, the big white horse stepped out eagerly. Oh, if you're eager to do something, that means you really want to do it, right? So this horse stepped out eagerly, L-Y, eagerly, it's an adverb, it means in a certain way, right? Eagerly means that he stepped out in an eager way. So the book puts it as with anticipation, with anticipation. If you anticipate something, you expect it to happen. If you have a birthday coming up soon, you're anticipating your birthday coming. You're excited about it. You're eager to have it come. With anticipation, whoops, I put with anticipate. Let's change that to anticipation. If you're eager for it to come, you are excited for it to come. You're anticipating it coming. And the last one, we know this root word. Look at this root word. Didn't we have that in vocabulary already? We did. Number five says the red cart went past the house and lurched into the road. Yeah, you know what that means. To move suddenly, right? Now your book says this, and remember we need to know what the book says for our um, activity that we have later on. It says rolled or pitched suddenly, meaning moving suddenly, or jerked. Um, there's space underneath. We should write it out because, again, later on when we do the review from the book, you will um, need to know it so that we can match those. Um, let's just put um, jerked according to the book. But we also know it means moved suddenly. So we're going to write that just as a review. If you run out of room, you can put it underneath it on that little space there. To jerked, moved suddenly. We're saying he's in the past tense. All right, if you still need a couple minutes to uh, finish those up, that's fine. You can pause the video, but here's what we're going to do. You need to somehow read chapter 12, all called The Tin Peddler. You need to read it. Now you can read it on your own, or if someone wants to read it with you, that's fine, but I need you to follow along. Or if you want to listen to it, either on YouTube or on Audible or some other system of listening to chapter 12, listening to someone read it to you, that is great. However, you must also look in your book and read every word with your eyes as they read out loud. So after you've read chapter 12, I want you to come back and we're going to talk about the questions on page 32. So go ahead and do that now. Alrighty, hopefully you've read chapter 12. I need you to open this book back up, Farmer Boy Workbook, page 32, if you're not there. Everybody there? Okay, question one. Who is Nick Brown and why are the Wilders eager to see him? Who's Nick Brown? That's the name of the Tin Peddler guy, right? Um, why are they so excited to see him come? Should have said something like, he always brings good stuff, right? He brings things for them. Not only does he bring things for them, but he's very entertaining. He's full of stories and songs. Not only does he bring them fun stuff, he brings them stuff that they need. Mm -hmm. They need those extra things to cook with. and They can't just go to Walmart. It's not there. They have to have somebody bring it to them. Or they could go into town, but that's a 
but it's a big long thing. That's something they don't do every day, right? Okay, question two. Describe some of the wares the peddler brings. My book has all kinds of stuff made out of tin. Can you tell me three things that were on his wagon right now? What was one of them? And two. And three. Can you think of them? I hope so. Let me read you the list that's in my book. They, he had pails, pans, basins, cups, dippers, skimmers, strainers, steamers, colanders, graters, uh, horns, whistles, and toy animals. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. Hopefully you remember three of them. All right, let's look at question three. Where does the peddler get the tinware he sells? Where does he get it for, from? Oh, he makes it himself, doesn't he? He does. He puts that work into it, and then he sells it. When does he make them? During the winter time. He doesn't have time when it's springtime and later because he's selling them. So that's how he uses his time wisely. Question four. What does mother use instead of money to trade with the peddler? Instead of giving him money, she gives him something else. What did she give him according to the book? She gave him clean, soft rags from her rag bag. That might not seem like something that we would do today because most likely we wouldn't. They were trading. They were doing something called bartering. They would give one thing in exchange for another. It's like uh, tra just trading back and forth. Hey, I really like this. Well, I'll trade you this for that and we would trade it that way. Mother did the same thing. Mother was a shrewd uh, trader. She knew how to get what she wanted and make a good deal at it. Number five, describe the way Mother and Mr. Brown bargain. Who wins? Okay, so they, we just kind of talked about that, right? My book, listen up, see if you agree, says, they laugh, joke, talk, and have a good time. Did they do that? Yeah, they did. Mother asks for more than she wants in order to get him to bargain with her. She doesn't really want the dish pan. It's a bargaining tactic, meaning that she tries to get him, she tells him she wants more, but then she'll settle for less than what she said. That way she can get what she actually wanted. And they agreed on that. And that's what we call a bargaining tactic. That's something that, a way to get what you want in a business deal. This, they will call it a bargaining tactic, a way to take care of that, to get that. Did you enjoy this chapter? I like this chapter too, because it's very interesting to hear all of his stories, and it's a, a good, a feel-good chapter. There's a lot of happy things that happen in there, in the Tin Peddler, right? All right, guys, that was chapter 12. I hope you liked it as much as I did. Uh, tomorrow, we will do chapter 13. I'll see you then.